It's been a while since I did a video on creationism, so here's a video sent to me on these two creationists discussing amongst themselves about antibiotic resistance. Welcome to Genesis Unleashed. You know, a common argument that evolutionists use mm -hmm. to, uh, to say that evolution is happening before our eyes, you creationists, how silly you are because you can't see this, this science that's happening, these observations that are happening right here today is antibiotic resistance. Bacteria, germs, things become resistant to antibiotics, the things that are meant to destroy them. Oh yes, I'm sure everyone is familiar with this concept. As we introduce antibiotics, some of the more resistant members of the bacteria populations will live. It will then reproduce and transfer its DNA to other bacteria so that they can be resistant as well. This is a good example of Darwin's theory of natural selection, since that is literally what it says. And they hail that as evidence for evolution. Right. So the idea is that uh, certain germs that were once resistant to certain antibiotics all of a sudden develop uh, antibiotic resistance means, uh, and, and the implication is perhaps that they, they have something new that they never had before, so they've changed. That must be evolution. Yes, they've adapted a, to a new environment with this antibiotic, and, and now they're able to, uh, they, they, they've evolved the resistance to it, that they've right. developed the resistance. Those kind of terms are used there to describe what's going on. All right, I let that play on long enough. Yes, these bacteria have developed a resistance. It now has a phenotype that was not previously dominant in the population. And notice how I said dominant. Even before the antibiotic was introduced, the resistance gene already existed. It was just not readily expressed in most members. This process turns a trait that was only exhibited by a few and made it common for the entire population. That's a mechanism in which evolution can occur. Now, does this alone say that our entire field of evolution is true? Of course not, but it certainly is evidence that this mechanism of evolution exists. So obviously something has happened, they've changed, but change does not equate to evolution. Many people think, well, if the creatures change, that must be a proof of evolution. But uh, of course, creationists believe that creatures can change over time. Uh, it's the type of change, really, that, that needs exactly, to be clarified yeah, type here. Of change. Actually, the definition of evolution is just change in living organisms over time. And it's not shocking how creationists would twist this definition in order to further their pseudoscience. This definition means that many things can be a mechanism of evolution. Natural selection is considered evolution. Migration can be a form of evolution. Genetic drift. The list goes on. All we say when we introduce the antibiotic resistance is that this is the form in which evolution can occur. The way you clowns are defining evolution is as if it encompasses our entire tree of evolution over millions of years and how these organisms specifically evolved. And that's not what the simple term of evolution encompasses. It also doesn't say that populations need to gain function either. Sure, mutations is a way in which more function can be obtained, but even just losing function is also considered evolution. So if I entered a field of cows and killed off all the big ones and left the small ones, that's evolution, because the overall gene pool of the new population has shifted to being smaller. Similarly, antibiotics killing off non-resistant bacteria is evolution, because it is shifting the bacteria gene pool to become more resistant. Um, what evolution would need to, to show is that there are changes in the living things that are, are new and beneficial that never existed before. If you're going to turn a bacteria into something like a horse over millions of years, what would you need to do to the DNA instructions of a bacteria to turn it into a horse? You would need to write in a brand new bunch of new information that never existed before for functions, features, uh, things that, uh, you know, bacteria don't have. No, not really. The mechanism doesn't have to introduce new and beneficial genes for it to be considered evolution. Again, you two are simply misunderstanding what the word evolution encompasses. They don't have uh, skin, and they don't have muscles, and they don't have bones, and they don't have blood. So where did all the genetic information come from? That's what evolution would need to show, that type right. of change. Right. Right? Well, of course they didn't have skin, blood, or muscle. These are single cells. Animals are multicellular organisms. If anything, you should have at least said, they aren't skin, they aren't blood, or they aren't muscle. Wow, I'm literally helping you set up your own bad argument. It's like you added two layers of pseudoscience. One of the points we could make is that the drug-resistant bacteria were already resistant to the drug. Right, except this is something that we already acknowledge. What would be so wrong about it if certain members of the bacteria already have the resistance gene? So in a certain population of, of these germs that develop resistance, some of them already have genetic information that's resisting the antibiotic. Yes, those bacteria that are already resistant go on to reproduce and they become the dominant bacteria and they are resistant to the antibiotic. So the resistance was already there. That's the first point that we can make. Right. 
Yeah, but here's the thing. Sure, the population already has members who are resistant to the antibiotic, but these resistant ones obtained the ability before the selective pressure took place. So you can go on and on about how bacterial natural selection against antibiotics doesn't give any new abilities, but that would fail to acknowledge that for a time before this antibiotic was introduced, a certain mutation or another mechanism gave that DNA to the bacteria to allow it to produce resistant enzymes that break down the antibiotic. This goes along with the concept of genetic diversity. The more diverse, the better for the population population, and bacteria in general are quite diverse. They have developed and obtained through mutations a wide range of functions, and it's no doubt that one of the obtained functions would be an antibiotic resistance. It isn't chance, it's science. When, when they recovered, you know, sometimes these explorers go off up north and, and unfortunately they, they, they die and they find their bodies years later, hundreds of years later after the expedition, they've actually found that some of the bacteria on, on the corpse are resistant to antibiotics that we developed Tens, many, 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 years, many years, later. years later. Yes, resistance. those bacteria from that body many, many years ago were already resistant to the, uh, right. to the antibiotics. So obviously they didn't evolve to something new we created. I would love to see the actual article on this. I have so many questions. Like, what antibiotic were they resistant to? Was the entire population resistant, or did it just not all die off when we used antibiotics, in which case would be completely expected? When was the antibiotic developed? These would make or break your claim. But even if what you said was completely true, antibiotics aren't things that we just invent. In fact, they are usually extracted from other organisms, such as fungi or even other bacteria. So yes, these are found in nature, which could also explain the resistance. Um, the second point is, is that uh, some uh, bacteria can actually exchange information for resistance. So uh, um, plasmid transfer, little, little coils of DNA, that, uh, the information for resistance. So one bacteria can sidle up to another one, pop out this little, little tube, you know, kind of inject it into the, into the other bacteria and, and, and shoot transfer over information. DNA. Transfer information. Yeah. <laughs> Basically bacteria sex. No, but for real, why can't you guys just say the actual name for it? Conjugation. Is that so hard? And yes, antibiotic resistance can easily be transferred through this method, but there's also transformation and transduction. Considering that transformation is the easiest to explain, I don't know why you chose conjugation, but let's continue. And so evolutionists, some have said, well look, now this bacteria has something that it didn't have before. Which is true. Which is true, but if uh, I hand you, uh, you know, a, a book, and you didn't have that book before, um, and now you have that book of information, that's not... It, it misses the point of it the argument, the doesn't point. it? Yeah. Because it's not new, never before existing genetic information. Right. We yes, but we're not claiming that this process generates new genetic information. But that method of resisting antibiotics did come about before this happened, possibly through a mutation. Like I explained earlier, a population of bacteria is diverse in the gene pool. Individual members will have all sorts of genes that isn't dominant in the population. So it isn't even like we're looking at the odds of a specific mutation, but rather this diversity of genes happens nearly 100% of the time, especially Especially for bacteria. Uh, another point that we can make is uh, where it has arisen from a genetic copying mistakes, a, a, a mutation. mutation. Uh, there's a mutation which causes a benefit, it causes a survival benefit. A bacteria might have a mutation that allows it to get around the antibiotic. But again, that doesn't fit our definition, the definition of what evolution needs to get. New, never before existing genetic information. I am pretty fucking tired of explaining this to creationists on what the definition of evolution is. It doesn't just mean the genome has to gain function. That's it. Well, if it's a mutation that would uh, somehow create a new uh, a bit of information that, that did cause resistance in, in the fact that it was a new function or new feature that had never before existed, but the type of mutation that we observe are the types of mutations that are actually breaking things down. Okay, here's the thing. Most of the time when bacteria gain resistance to an antibiotic, it actually is a gain of function. It produces an enzyme that works to break down the antibiotic to a less harmful substance. Take the example of penicillin, or any beta-lactam drug. These are cleaved by an enzyme produced by the bacteria called beta-lactamase. Basically, if you have beta-lactamase, you're resistant. If you don't, you die. Don't even try to tell me that the presence of an enzyme isn't a gain of function compared to the absence of it. This is why when we grow bacteria on ampicillin or canamycin plates, or whatever antibiotic, we can have satellite colonies. These are colonies that aren't actually resistant, but because beta-lactamase or any other enzyme that breaks down antibiotics is actually secreted into the medium, resistant colonies can 
can create a ring around it in which bacteria without the enzyme can survive. Another example is how resistant bacteria still have to take a while before they start growing on an antibiotic medium, because they need to take time to produce the enzyme. We can speed this up in a lab by simply shaking them during the incubation. Now of course, these gains of functions could have been simple point mutations, but beta-lactamase has been evolving since 2 billion years ago. There's no doubt that the function it serves today is beneficial and has been gained by the bacteria over this course of time. So yeah, but to be honest, I am surprised you even thought of this. Even though it's not completely true, it's something that if I were a creationist, I would pull out and hope no one is educated enough to realize its flaws. To be honest though, there are resistances that can occur through loss of functions, but they don't make up all of it. Anyway, that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed the lengthy explanations. If you haven't already, I would love to have you subscribe to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video.